Thank you, Jesus. God is good. And his mercy enjoyed forever. Amen. Good night, church. Amen. Good night, turn of God. God is good. And his mercy enjoyed forever. Amen. So you are welcome to the True Light Sanctuary team of all service, of all nations, for our life services. Amen. At this point in time, amen. So you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Amen. To the household of faith tonight. Amen. Go out and is the best. Our time doesn't matter. Amen. It is time to drink into the Spirit of God. Amen. It is time for me to be revived in the things of God's Spirit. Amen. So we thank God for every one of you. Amen. That is log on to our services tonight. Amen. Whereby we'll be able to be edified and grow in the Spirit of God. Amen. And this is the season that we have to depend upon the Holy Spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is the season that we have to depend upon the Holy Spirit because there is no other solution for us on earth more than the Spirit of God. I repeat, there is no other solution for us on earth more than the Spirit of God. So we need to be in tune with God. We need to be in tune with God. We need to know the mind of God. We need to know the heart of God in this season. Amen? Can the Bible say the foolishness of God is wiser than men? Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? The Bible say the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Amen? And now is the time that we need to spend time with God. Now is the time that we need to communicate with God. Now is the time that we need to know what next. We need to know what God is about to do. What is the next move? Amen? If not, we will just be there. Amen? Wondering and thinking amen but let us shape our spiritual life into the image of god are you hearing what i'm saying let us shape our spiritual life into the image of god because the bible says in the book of genesis that god has made us in his own image are you hearing what i'm saying but we can only be shaped in the image of god when we allow god to address our life when we allow God's word to be a standard for our life. When we allow the spirit of God to be a part of us. Are you hear what I'm saying tonight? What will change you is the word of God. What will convert you is the word of God. What will encourage you is the word of God. What will save you is the word of God. So we need to understand the importance with spending time with God, communicating with God, and understanding the mind of God in this season. Are you understand what I'm saying? You you see, the only thing that man could do is convince you. I hear you one other thing tonight. Whatever man could do is could only convince you. And you need the Holy Spirit to convert you. There is no man could convert you. There is no man who is able to convert you. And that's why Jesus told Peter. He said, Peter, when thou art converted, strengthen thy bedroom. But when you look at the track record of Peter, Peter was active in ministry. And you hear what I'm saying? Peter was active in ministry. Peter was a follower of Jesus Christ. Peter was side to side with Jesus Christ. Peter saw the great things that Jesus did. And you hear what I'm saying? And Jesus told Peter, he said, Peter, when you are converted, strengthen those that is weak. I hear what I'm saying. So now, what God is trying to tell Peter, Peter, I know that you're willing to follow me. I know that you have a heart for God. I understand that. But I want you, you to know that having a heart for God and being converted by God is two different things. Are you hear what I'm saying? Having a zeal for God and being converted by the Spirit of God is two different things. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you can have a zeal for God, yet still don't have the knowledge of God. Ah, oh my God. I say we can have a zeal for God, yet still don't have the knowledge of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, you can have the zeal of God, and yet still have not been submitted under God's righteousness. So now, that's why we need to be converted by the Spirit of God. Now, when I mean the word converted, I'm speaking about being adopted by the Spirit of God. Are you hear what I'm saying? So now we need to be adopted. In other words, we need to be reborn 
not of earthly things, of corruptible things, but on corruptible things. Oh my God. And this was Romans was saying to us. He said, we leave the image of an uncorruptible God for corruptible things. So God is uncorruptible. So that's why we need to be in the image of God. We need to be godly. I hear what I'm saying. We need to be godly. We need to be Christ-like in this season. And that's the only time that you will see the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Now, when you are truly converted by the Spirit of God, you allow the manifestation. Oh, my God. You allow what? The manifestation to burst forth through you. In other words, now, the Bible says, that the entire universe is waiting for what? The manifestation. Now, manifestation is the partaker of those that have been crucified with Christ and have been resurrected for the manifestation of the move of God. So this is the season that God is looking for people who, are, who have died to flesh and resurrected in the spirit whereby we'll be able to demonstrate the manifestation of the glory of God on this end time. So now, it's more than just saying, I am a Christian. It's more than just saying that I believe in God. It's more than just saying that I am converted. It's more than just confessing. It's what? It's being adopted. Now, when you are converted, it takes the Holy Spirit to draw you from sin and put you into a relationship with God. I repeat, when you are truly converted, it takes what? the Holy Spirit to draw us from sin and to place us into a what? A relationship with God. Now, this relationship is being adopted by the Spirit of God. Now, when you are adopted by the Spirit of God, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8, whereby we receive, now understand, we what? We receive what? The Spirit of what? Adoption. That we cry what? Abba Father. Now, and when you cry Abba Father now, then now God will manifest himself through us in this generation. So let us be in the spirit of God. Let us stop being approved by man and be approved of God. God's approval is official. Yeah. We are well known by men but have not been recognized by God. Yeah. It takes you better. It, it, it makes you better when you are not known by man and well known by God. And that's what Jesus was saying. He said, Father, glorify thy son. He said, the hour has come that you need to glorify thy son that you may be glorified. Are you getting what I'm saying? And Jesus was trying to say, Father, they are not known me but you have known me. Today, we are familiar being known by man and have not been known by God. Yeah. We are familiar being known by man and have not been known by God. It's time for you believers, it's time for you children of God to be known by God. When you is known by God, your results will answer those who, who, whom you have not been known by. When you are truly known by God, your results will answer those whom you have not been known by. When God rises you up, the Bible says that righteousness exalt a nation. It don't matter who don't know you. What matters is if God knows you. Are you hear what I'm saying? It does not matter who don't know you what matters is if God knows you the Bible say don't do things to be seen of man yeah you need to understand man have the mindset of deceiving those who is from above if you don't know me that's fine if they don't know you, that's okay. Once God knows you, that's most important. And once God knows you, soon, 
they will hear about you. And you hear what I'm saying? Because Jesus Christ make it clear. He said, the, the first place you got to prosper is in your spiritual life. If you are prosperous in your physical life and have not been prosperous in your spiritual life, check yourself. You are living a back-to-front life. I repeat. If you have been very prosperous physically and not been prosperous spiritually, you are living a back-to-front. Do you know what is a back-to-front? A back-to-front is meaning you start from the back to the front. Yeah. You are living a back-to-front life. That's not the order. Your spirit firstly needs to be approved by God then your spirit will be approved by man but today we allow ourselves to be approved by man then we want to be proved by God no, 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 no you cannot be approved by man and become successful powerful converted in this end time you need to know God. A relationship don't establish with people. First. A relationship established with God. First. And then the love of God overflows on the people. This is how relationship is. Relationships start with God. Marriage starts with God. Church starts with God. Love starts with God. Everything starts from God. Why? It's because we are the integral part of God. We are the greatest material that God have, have ever made on earth. We, yes, mankind. I get what I'm saying. So we need to be approved by God. And that's what we leave it to my text tonight. Being approved by the Holy Spirit. Tell someone next to you. Being approved by the Holy Spirit. We are not accustomed being approved by the Holy Spirit. We love fame and to be recognized by men. Man disapproval creates God's approval. I repeat. Man disapproval creates what? God's approval. I repeat, man disapproval will create God's approval for your life. Who have disapproved you? Mm, who don't like you? Who don't want you to be in the company? That's okay. When man's reject, go and accept. <laughs> when man cast down, God pull up. This is a mindset of God. Being approved by the Holy Spirit. Being approved by what? The Holy Spirit. Are you hear what I'm saying tonight? I want you to know that you are approved by the Holy Spirit if you are in the Spirit. Take note of this. Take note of this. Take note of this. Take note of this. Take note. You are, you can only be approved when you are walking in God's spirit. Take note of this. Don't feel that you are approved by God when you are walking in the flesh. I repeat. Don't believe that you are approved by God when you are walking in the flesh take teaching take this teaching this teaching will save your soul when you are walking in the flesh you are being disapproved by god and approved by man <laughs> you hear what i'm saying tonight when you are walking in the flesh you are being approved by man and disapproval by God. You need to walk in the spirit to be approved by God. 
and dead man will disapprove you. This is like you. When you are approved by God, man will not accept you. Take note of this. When you are approved by God, man will not want to be in your company. When you is approved by God, man will not want to confirm that you are truly of God. But when you are being approved by God, it is confirmed by God that you belong to him. <laughs> when you is being approved by God, it is accepted by God that you belong to him. Take note of this. When you is approved by God, your blessings is sure. Ah, oh my God. When you is approved by God, you are qualified to pass all your tests. When you is approved by God, it officially agree that it is God's will and not yours anymore. We need to be approved by God, not by man. Oh, man's approval. It's not good. Man's approval is not good. Whatever man make or whatever man made will fail the test of time. But whatever God create will pass every test. That's why it's important for you to be in the spirit. When you are in the spirit, you are being approved by God. When you are in the flesh, you are being disapproved by God. Take note of this. You want to be approved? Walk in the spirit. You want to be disapproved by God? Walk in the flesh. Are you hear what I'm saying? The choice is yours. We yourself, we yourself, we yourself. I'm in the flesh or in the spirit? I'm in the flesh or in the spirit? If you are in the flesh, take notes, take notes, take notes. If you are in the flesh, you are disapproved by God. If you are in the spirit, you are approved by God. That's how it works. Now, if you are in the flesh, yes, you can be identified, recognized, well known by man but have not been known by God. But when you are in the spirit, you might not be known to man. Yeah. But you are very well recognized by God. Take note of this. Take note of this. Where you want to be? Approved by man or approved by God? Disapproval by God or approved by man? Approval by man or disapproval by God? The choice belongs to you. And that will lead me to my text tonight. Being approved by the Holy Spirit. Take notes. Being approved by what? By the Holy Spirit. Yes, we need the Holy Spirit. We need to be approved by the Holy Spirit. We need to be recognized and identified by the Holy Spirit. Let's take the proof text in the book of Romans chapter 8. Let's take the proof text tonight. Romans chapter 8 from verse 1. Mm. To 9. Romans chapter 8. From verse 1 to 9, you can pin this on the screen that those who don't have a Bible home will follow with us. Romans chapter 8, from verse 1 to 9. Are you following with me tonight? Don't be distracted. Being approved by the Holy Spirit. Take note of this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now watch this. Take note. Follow with me. There is therefore now no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not, take note of this, who walk not after the flesh, 
but after the Spirit. Take note of this. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Recognize there, there are two laws. Are you see what I'm saying there? For what the law could not do in, the, in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Condemn sin where? In the flesh. Think of this. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Take note of this. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Take note of this. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity to against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Take note of this. Neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Take note of this. Take note of this. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Father, we bless your word tonight, and we pray, God, that your grace that is able to keep us God in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against our principalities and demonic powers that is fighting against your church in the name of Jesus. We dismantle and we cancel God every demonic powers, every demonic shun, every demonic connection in the name of Jesus to be destroyed by the spirit of the living God. We pray God that clarity, wisdom, knowledge shall flow God from your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray God that every demonic mindset that the enemy has imported in your people God. We pray that their mind shall be loose right now by the spirit of the living God. We pray God that mind shall be converted by your spirit God. Was not by mind, was not by power but by your spirit God. And Father God we pray for your spirit to be converted into the hearts of your people in Jesus mighty name I pray amen and amen God bless his word amen God bless his word amen so the Bible say that there is no condemnation for those who are where in Christ Jesus take note of this take note of this follow with me he said there is therefore now so now, when you are walking in the Spirit of God, hear, hear, hear me, hear me well. When you are walking in the Spirit of God and being approval of God, there is no condemnation for those, take note of this, to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now, when you look at the word condemnation, now, condemnation is meaning disapproval. Take note of this. So now there are no disapproval for those. Now I'm not talking about disapproval by men. I'm talking about disapproval by God. For now you that is in the spirit, God is saying there are no disapproval of you when you began to serve me. Now, when you believe that you are condemned by men, you gotta remember that you are. There is no condemnation. In other words, there are no disapproval for you. It don't matter how far you 
turn your back on Jesus, God is willing to accept you. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You believe that I'm not favorable by God anymore. I went too far away from God because why? The flesh had taken you away from God. But God is trying to tell you now, once you make up your mind to think spiritually, you could come back to God because you will not be disapproved by God. God is waiting for you at a point. God is waiting for you at a point. So sometimes, your behavior that you do, you believe that you are not worthy to follow Jesus. You feel that you are not worthy enough to pick back up the slack what you have dropped off. Now you have to understand the sin of the law is what will move you from God that makes you feel you have been disapproval of God. Now, when you come back in the mind of the Spirit of God, you will be welcomed by God. This is what I'm trying to tell you. So now, unfavorable opinion. So now, you have to understand your opinion that is walking in the Spirit that you will always be approved by God. But you must be in the spirit of God. Take notes. Don't interpret this wrong. Now, how can I be approved by God is when I keep on walking in the spirit. Now, when you are approval of God, it don't matter the little mistakes you make. Now, because you are approval of God and you are walking a spiritual road, it is entitled for you to make mistakes. But God is willing to approve you even in your mistake. Ah, Rabbi Shara. I said God is willing to accept you even when you make a mistake as a Christian. It's when you allow your flesh to draw you and become, you becoming addicted to the things of the flesh, then you will not be approved by God. So God is saying, you have no condemnation, you that is following me. Once you make up your mind to follow me, mistake can be corrected. If you fall, you can get back up. But don't stay making mistake continually. Don't stay there. That's why Paul says to us in Romans, will you continue in sin because grace abound? In other words, not because there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus, will you continue doing the wrong thing? Are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? So now, if you know that there's no disapproval for you, who are in Christ Jesus? Who walk in accordance of the spirit. That is enough evidence you need. That is just the word of comfort you need. For you to pick up yourself and get back into the spirit of God. Oh my God. You have been approved by God. That's why you need to stay in the spirit. Yes, challenges will come your way. Yes, obstacles will come your way. Yes, mistakes will come your way. But understand, when God approves you, it don't matter who disapproves you. No, there's no condemnation now. So, in other words, whenever you make a mistake, you could go to God now. Are you hear what I'm saying? You could go to him now. And reconcile now. And repent now. And he will forgive you now. Ah, oh my God. You better catch the mind of God. What Satan do to our mind when you make a mistake? Satan make you feel you are guilty. Satan make you feel you are not worthy. Satan make you say, oh my God, look at him. Look at him. Oh my God, he, he have been finished. He have been finished. He's a good for nothing. Now, when you look at David's experience, because David was in the spirit. Now, when David sinned against God, now watch what David did. David went and repented. Look at that. Now, when David repented now, there will God reconcile back David to himself. Now, because David was already approved by God. See what I'm saying? Now, because David was approved by God, there was no one who could condemn him. And that's why God still bears the title of 
son of David. Now, why he used the legacy of son of David? Because those who is walking in the spirit, there are no condemnation for them. There's none. But if you abandon the spirit of God and go back to your worldly behavior, what you are doing there, you will be disapproval of God and be approved to the world. Don't mix me up. Don't mix me up. I'm not trying to tell you that you have to do live any kind of life because there's no condemnation. Remember, there is no condemnation for those who are in the spirit. Don't forget that. This is what he's saying. There is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk after the flesh who walk not after the flesh, sorry, but after the spirit. So don't try to live a fleshly life, being addicted to fleshly things, and then try to mock God, to try to deceive God. You will end up in trouble. But if you are walking in the spirit and very determined to achieve the benefits of the spirit of God and you now bounce your toe. What you got to do now is to get on the face of God and cry out immediately. Immediately. You don't be addicted to your fleshly desire and expect God not to pass what? Condemnation on you. Now, there are no condemnation for those who are in where? Who are in where? Who are in the spirit. Don't forget that. So now what he's trying to tell you now. What he's trying to tell you now. You are willing even with mistake. Now that's why now. The, even the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. That a righteous man will fall what? Seven times. Now what he's trying to say now. That the reason why David was, was able to defeat his errors is because why? He understand when I have the Holy Spirit. Now, when you grieve the Holy Spirit, it will leave. When you quench it, it will leave. So David understand now, I need back the Holy Spirit. Now, what sin does, sin remove the Holy Spirit from your life. I repeat, what sin does, sin what? Remove what? The Holy Spirit from your life. So David recognized now, oh my God, oh my God, Holy Spirit have what? Removed from my life. Why? Because I end up in the mindset of a fleshly mindset. So what David does, David went now and fell in the temple of God and began to pray. And now, because God is merciful and there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk according to the flesh. I mean, according to the spirit. Now, David recognized now, all I have to do now is not to continue doing wrong, but to reconcile my relationship with God. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now, David recognized now, even in my mistake, I could still come back to God. What God is trying to tell you tonight, even in your mistakes that you have made with God, you can still come back to God. Come back to that place of walking in the spirit. Come back in that place of drinking in the one spirit. Come back in that place of your blessing. Come back in that place where you are accepted by God. Come back in that place because God has confirmed that you belong to him. Come back in that place because God has officially agreed that you are one of him. Don't forget that. Now watch this, watch this. Let's continue. Watch this. Two. I'm walking you through the scripture to understand now the mind of God. Being approved by the Spirit of God. Now, so understand when you are approved by the Spirit of God, you have to understand now that there is always room within Christ for you. Now, when the world is passing judgment on you, Christ is saying, no, I forgive you. When the world is criticizing you, God is saying, no. I cannot criticize you 
Mistake can be corrected. Come back home. When the world is saying, oh my God, look at her. She, she now going on following Christ. Look, she in the club. Now, if you are in the club, you are still have time to come back to God. Why? Just come off from that flesh and come back into spirit. Simple. How can I come off from the flesh, prophet? Is when you abandon the things of the world. When you abandon the mindset. Now, sin plays and controls our mindset. I repeat. Sin play and what controls our mindset. So sin have access to your mind. So what now? When you have done an error in Christ, what the enemy do? He play with your mind. He make you feel guilt. You are not worthy. Hey boy, you are not worthy. Go back in that lifestyle of sin. Go back and rock shop back up with that man. Go back and, 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 and continue to gamble. Go back up. So the devil speak to your mind. Because why? He will know that your mind is a carnal place. He knows that. Because many of us, our mind is not converted. And when he knows that your mind is not converted, you don't have on a mind of Christ, there he packed his load and began to speak to you from himself. For himself. Now watch this, watch this. Two. Now, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now watch this, watch this. Now, when he used the word law, now follow with me with this teaching. For the law, which is now for the teaching, take note of this, for the instructions, for the rules, take notes, take notes. Now, I'm trying to help you that you will understand the importance of tapping back in the spirit and staying in the spirit. I repeat, I'm trying to teach you by the Holy Spirit the importance of tapping back into the spirit to receive from the spirit. Now watch this. He said now, verse 2. For the teaching. Now this teaching is a spiritual teaching. Take note of this. No. For the teaching of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ had made me and you free from where? Captivity. Watch this. From the what? Teaching. Law again. Of what? Sin and death. So now, there's a teaching of the spirit and there's a teaching of the flesh. I repeat. When he said now, for the teaching, which is the instruction, which is the rules. Now, why Christ give us the gospel is because we shall not be in the place of backsliding, but be in the place that he had destined for we to be. That's what he's trying to tell you. So he said, now, for the teaching, which is the law, for the teaching of the spirit in the lack of life. Now, there's the teaching that could impact you with life, and as well, there's the teaching that can impact you with death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So now, if you heed and believe that you are disapproved by God, you could be submitting yourself to the teaching of which is what? Of sin and death. Now, there are teachings that could manipulate your mind and push you back into a place of sin and place of death. Like unforgiveness, like covetousness, like malice, like pride, envy, jealousy. No, this is laws of teaching. Rabbi Shara. Are you getting this revelation? So there's a teaching of life and there's a teaching of death. So when he used the word law in the realms of the spirit, he said, no, for the law, which is the rules, which is the command, which is the teaching of the spirit, take note of this, of life in Christ Jesus. So when Christ appears, he brings what? The gospel. He brings a prophetic teaching where we will be saved from what? From condemnation. 
So the teaching that Christ gave us is to be free from condemnation. So now when you don't know where you belong, whenever things come to you, you believe that you are not worthy, you are not approved, you are not welcome, you are believed to be not blessed. So then now you have been approved by the law of sin. So the law of sin is the law of condemnation, but the law of the spirit is the law of not being condemned. Condemnation. Are you getting what I'm saying tonight? You better follow with this teaching tonight. So the teaching of the flesh will lead you to death. And the teaching of the spirit will usher you to life everlasting. But these are two teachings. Why there's two teaching? Because there are two masters. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The reason why there are two teachings. Because there are two masters. There is good, there is bad. There is life, there is death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is obedience, there is disobedience. There is approval, there is disapproval. There is blessing, there is curse. There is light, there is darkness. There is good, there is evil. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now, the law have exists with one. But the flesh will heal to the opposite. I repeat you. I say the law of Christ have exist in biblical teaching, but the law of the flesh have manifest through the flesh. Whereby we will not be able to achieve what? The law of life. So now, there it will be a fight. Life, death. Why? Because there's a law. Just like how God have laws, Satan have laws. If God say to forgive, Satan will tell you not to forgive. There are laws. If God say be obedient, Satan laws is disobedient. So Satan pray a prayer. Not a prayer of righteousness, but a prayer of unrighteousness. Yeah. Why? Because no, Satan law are not more powerful than Christ, but it is effective as well. I repeat, Satan laws is not more powerful than Christ, but it's what? It is effective. The reason why I say Satan laws is effective because it holds people in captivity. Are you getting what I'm saying? The reason why it is effective, but because it can hold many in captivity. But the law of Christ is to the full capacity. So even if you are living in captivity, Jesus Christ's law could make you captive. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Jesus Christ's law is to the full capacity. That's why he said all things was made by him. And without him, there was nothing that was made. Now, why? Because the law of life conquer the law of death. Ah, oh my God. The law of the spirit conquer the law of the flesh. Ah. The law of life defeat the law of death. Are you following with me tonight? You better take this teaching to heart. Being approved. Being approved by the Spirit of by the Holy Spirit. Don't watch this. Three. I'm following you. I'm going with you step by step. Three. For what the teaching could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh. Now, God has given us instructions, teaching, the command of Moses. That was the teaching. So it was the instruction, the rules of God, the command of God. Now, because we was not walking with a spiritual mindset, we was weak of, of being able to fulfill God's desire on earth. Because we was walking without a spiritual, what, mindset, and from a spiritual point of view, we was unable to fulfill God's plans and purpose on earth. So he was trying to explain to us now, watch this, it's going somewhere. For what the teaching could not do in, the flesh, in that it was weak in the flesh. So God decided now, I will send his own son in the likeness of what? 
sinful flesh. Now understand, in the likeness of what? Sinful flesh. Take note of this. Not sinful spirit. Sinful flesh. Take note of this. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. So what God is trying to say, flesh has already received the fear payment of sin. Flesh, flesh, flesh. Now, flesh cannot glorify God. Flesh cannot stand before God. Flesh must be crucified in the eyes of God. That's why the Bible says that we need to present our what? Our bodies. In other words, we need to crucify our flesh. So that is presenting your body as a living sacrifice. Now, when you condemn your flesh, you resurrect your spirit. When you condemn your flesh, you resurrect your spirit. Now, that you will be able to receive the things of God that is freely given to us. Are you following this teaching tonight? I want you to follow this teaching tonight. Watch this. For what the teaching could not do, God decided to send his son in a manner of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. No, not in the spirit. Now, the reason why he was able to condemn sin in the flesh, because he never came in the flesh. He came in the spirit. Oh, my God. But he was clothed in flesh. Now, the reason why Jesus had to be crucified is because why? He was crucifying the flesh. So now God decided to send my son in the manner of sinful flesh, yet still he was in the spirit. So now you could be looking like you operating in the flesh, but now you have to be living in the spirit. So what God is trying to tell you now, you are a spirit living in the physical body. Simple. You are what? A spirit living what? In a sinful, lustful, fleshly body. That's why it is very important for you to allow your flesh to be under subjection. When I use the word flesh, I'm talking about the senses. That was important for we to keep our senses under subjection. Let's go somewhere. Watch this. Four. That, that the what? Righteousness. No, the righteousness is not of the flesh. Of the spirit. No one. That the righteousness of the gospel, of the teaching, of the doctrine. That's what the law, right? So that the righteousness of the gospel might be fulfilled in us. Watch this. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. He going back to tell you now. Now, the only how the righteousness of God could be revealed Feel in you, you need to be in the spirit. Now, if you are in the flesh, you are strangling the things of the spirit. So it's important for you to strangle the flesh to partake in the things of the spirit. And that's why you need to be approved by God. But you cannot be approved by God when you are in the flesh. Whenever you is in the flesh, you are already been disapproved. So he's warning you, he said, No, there's no condemnation, but don't come to me in the flesh. Please come to me in the spirit. Don't partake of me in the flesh, partake of me in the spirit. Don't glorify me in the flesh, glorify me in the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he's trying to walk you through now so that the righteousness of the, of, of the teaching might be fulfilled in us. Now, the righteousness of the teaching might be fulfilled in us. Might, look at the word might. So it all depends on your behavior. It all depends on your what? Your behavior. So it's your choice. If you want the righteousness of God to be fulfilling you, there are protocol, there are principle, and there are way and manner we ought to carry about ourselves by obeying the law of the spirit. So now there are law of the spirit and there are law of the flesh. So now when you heed to the law of the spirit, there you'll be able to partake in the things of God. And then you can stand before God and know that, hey, there are no condemnation. There are no condemnation. So when man disapproves you, you know what God already says to you. Oh my God. When man says you will not be blessed, you already know what God has says to you. When man said, hey, you are not confirmed or you are not qualified to be this and be that, you already know what God already confirmed to you. Because why? You are not in the flesh. 
You are where? In the spirit. Stay in the spirit. Stay in the spirit. Be in the spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Watch this. Watch this. Are you following, are you following with me? I'm trying to walk you through the scripture. Five. Watch this now. So the law means what? The teaching of the spirit. Follow with me. So the law of the spirit means what? The teaching of the spirit. Write down this. For the law of the spirit means what? The teaching of the spirit. Take note of this. Amen? So the condemnation means what? No condemnation means what? No disapproval. Are you understand what I'm saying? No disapproval. So in other words, you are favorable in the eyes of God. You are willing even of mistakes. So in other words, there are always room for you at the cross, at the feet of Jesus Christ. All you need to do is reconcile your life to Jesus, repent, and get back in alignment. You hear what I'm saying? It don't matter who condemn you. It don't matter who judge you. It don't matter who hold you from pain of the past. It does not matter. Once you get back yourself in the spirit, remember, there is no condemnation for you. You are approved by God. You are approved by God. You are confirmed that God already accept you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't listen to the voice of the earth. Listen to the voice from above. Thank you, Lord. Now watch this. Five. Follow with me. Five. For they that are after the flesh. Watch this. For they that are after the flesh do what? Mine. Look at the word mine. Now, take note of this. I'm trying to walk you step by step. Five. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things, watch this, do mind the things of the flesh. For they that have the mind, so it starts with your mind. No, your mind is your brain. Your mind is where you have an understanding. Your mind is the avenue where you think. That's why it's important now, your mind, your brain, your understanding. Now, that's why many people today who is sitting from a carnal mind move by what? Their senses. Your mind will show you something what you don't want to look at. Your mind. Your mind will make you go and touch things what God says not to touch. I'm talking to your mind, right? Your mind. For the mind, you know what, watch this. For they that are, that are after the flesh do think the things of the flesh. So now your, 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 your conscience, not, not your conscience, forgive me. Not your conscience, sorry. Your, your, your senses, right? So your senses operate through your flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your conscience, not your conscience, sorry. <laughs> your, 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 your mind is controlled by your senses. Amen? The devil is a liar. So now, your mind is controlled by your, by your what? By your senses. Now, your brain, your understanding. So now, when you see something now, you analyze it. Now, there where imagination comes in. So your mind comes like a what? A memory card. There where imagination comes in. It comes like a it, it, it comes like a it, it comes like a, a brain box. Are you getting what I'm saying? So your mind now is something that where Satan comes and analyzes and brings what? Imaginations to you. Now, your mind is something like this. Your mind will send signal to your flesh. Are you hear what I'm saying? So there is under the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. So your mind sends signal to manifest the works of the law of the flesh. Now, what your mind does now, your mind now will show, will tell you, okay, it's time to speak to you now. It will show you now, hey, look left. When you look left now, you will see something. Now, what you see will feed back to your mind. Why? Because your mind flow and develop and activate through what? Your senses. Now, then now what you see, you will want to touch. Now, it starts with what? Your brain. It starts with what? Your thinking. Now, when, it, when you think it, then you add 
allow the deeds or the action to be fulfilled with what you think. And that's why Jesus was telling you, cast down all imagination. So now your mind is a place that creates imaginations. Your mind is a place that finalizes things. It brings things, make it look real to you. So a person who is an overthinker, no, the action or the, the behavior or the what? The character might then be in, in, in the line of the Spirit of God. Why? Because why? You, you already analyze it and fabricate it and design it. And now, believe now. So now, your mind is a place that could trick you. So now, when your mind tricks you now, we tell you, oh, God, you're yeah, that good. Now, because, because from a spiritual view, many people make fleshly decision is because of their mind. No, your mind and your flesh, they come, as I tell you, it's a brain box. So with the brain, it allow, I'll use a vehicle for the, 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 the um, experience. Now, a vehicle or a car, right, when the brain box blow, the car malfunction. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, when your mind is subject to the enemy the enemy have the power to function through your whole body now when you have the spirit of god in you the spirit of god stop you from functioning through the flesh what the spirit of god does it subject your five senses in other words, it govern, it control, it wrapped your five senses that you're not going to be moving on the things you see with your natural eyes. You're not going to be want to touch the things with your, with, 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 that God said not to touch. You will not want to taste the things. So now your five senses is what control from where? Your brain. So that's what Jesus was to say. For the for they that is after the flesh do think, which is mind, which is understand, right? The things of the flesh. But watch this. But they that is after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So there are two minds. There's a spiritual mind and there's a physical mind. There's a carnal mind and there's a spiritual mind. There's a heavenly mind, there's an earthly mind. There's a mind with spiritual understanding and there's a mind with earthly understanding. There's a mind of earthly wisdom and there's a mind of spiritual wisdom. So it's always an opposite. Follow with me. Watch this. Watch this. Six. Six, right? For to be carnally minded. Now, watch this. Watch this. So he remind you. For to be carnally minded is death. Now, what is a carnal mind? A carnal mind is a physical mind. A fleshly mind. A lustful mind. Especially sexual. This is, this is a mind that was Satan have manifest through the flesh. I repeat, these are the kind of mind that Satan have what? Manifest in the flesh. Now when you have an earthly mind, a carnal mind, you cannot see nothing that God have given to you. Even if God said a, a word for you, because that mind is carnal, you began to doubt. Are you hear what I'm saying? Watch this. So now, because the carnal mind, now watch this, because the carnal mind is what? Iniquity, which is now, the carnal mind create conflicts. Iniquity, iniquity, right? Against God. So now, a carnal mind create conflicts. A carnal mind is a mind that hold malice. A carnal mind is a mind that hold bitterness. A carnal mind is a man that hold hatred. This is a carnal mind. So a carnal mind is a mind that does not focus on the things of God, but on the things that is contrary against the things of God. That's why he said now, a carnal mind is what? Enmity against God. Sexual, this is what carnal mind think. Malice, unforgiveness, lustful things, covetousness. Carnal mind cannot please God. And they were trying to say now. So a carnal mind is what? A physical mind. A lustful mind. A fleshly mind. 
especially that's why there are many people today all they are thinking is only sexual things because why that's carnal mind lustful things covetousness greed that is a carnal mind so this kind of mind cannot tap in to the spirit of god why because it is contrary against the will of god i get what i'm saying so enmity so enmity so now enmity right so now so enmity mind is a a mind that you always like to make confusion a mind that is you always bitter malice in you hatred ill will you 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 just opposite this is what devil do with our mind he messed up your brain and everything of the spirit you cannot understand it why because the carnal mind is empty to god it creates envy bitterness in other words you have no peace you have no peace that's why you need to know the importance of you being approved of the spirit now when you are approved by the spirit of god you know who you are there are 99 percent of people in this world today don't know who they are why because they are living with a carnal mindset i repeat there are 90 percent of people in this world today does not know who they are because they are living with a carnal mindset and then we say now because the carnal mind is enmity against god it cannot please god a carnal mind is a is, is is a lustful mind fleshly mind that's why it's very few people speaks about spiritual things today few people talks about spiritual godly counsel today that's why she said blessed is a man that walking not in the counsel of the ungodly not sitting in the way of sinner, not sitting in the seat of the scornful, but his meditation is to meditate in the law of the Lord day and night. Why? Because if you don't meditate in the law of the Lord day and night, right there, Satan will try to put a what? A carnal mind upon you. A mind that is holding malice, bitterness, fleshly desire, sexual thoughts, lustful thoughts. So your brain will be corrupt. When your brain corrupt, your action will be corrupt. I'm sorry. Because your brain is what allow your body to function, your flesh. But your heart allow your spirit to function. I repeat. Your brain allow your fleshly part of your body to function. But your spirit, which is your heart, lead you in the way of God's spirit. And that's what we don't know. So we don't even know how our body function. So when your brain is corrupt, your brain is malfunctioning, you will malfunction. Many people are doing things against their will today. It's because their brain is malfunctioning. Why? All that's going through their brain is sexual thoughts. Lustful thoughts physical and just lustful things this is what go through their brain conflicts malice bitterness unforgiveness hatred envy jealousy there are people that every day these are the things that go through their mind and this is a what a carnal mind but the mind of christ is a mind of peace a mind of joy, a mind of 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 of, of kindness. You, you you know you because why? Because you don't hear God from your mind. You hear God from your heart, and because now you are not listening to your mind, you become the malfun. You cannot malfunction. Sometimes somebody do some things, and because why they do it? It's because the flesh manifests. And this is why we need to understand now you need to know that you are approved by God when you are in the spirit so what God is trying to teach us the importance of staying in the spirit of God yeah the importance of staying in the spirit of God because as anointed as you are as anointed as you are as holy as you are 
if you don't allow the spirit of God and know the word of God, your mind will deceive you. Ask David. David end up cutting himself, lusting with sexual lust, especially sexual lust. David was drawn away from it. To, I mean, towards it. Why? Because Satan entered him. He was anointed. He was holy. He was a man of God. But what? Satan had entered that mind. And in that late space of time, Satan catch him in the flesh. And now when Satan catch you in the flesh, he replaced now the spirit of God in you. In other words, he take the Holy Spirit and give you a what? A contrary spirit. That's how it works. So David, because his thoughts have been manifest in the flesh, he was, he ended up in his senses. Now when David ended up in his senses, he began to mad function. He said, eh, eh, hear me see, hear me sir. Put this man in the hottest part of the battle. He began to mad function. Why? It's because his mind, sit and enter right there. Canal mind. So now, he wanted the things he saw. Think note of this. The reason why he wanted Bathsheba is because he saw her. So right there, you recognize that his senses began to what? To what? Control him. So now, when he saw her from the rooftop, he wanted to touch her. Take note of this. When he wanted to touch her, he wanted to feel her. Are you see what I'm saying? When he feel her, he wanted to test her. Oh my God. Oh my God. Are you see what I'm saying? But it starts with what? Your brain. A carnal mindset. A lustful. Now you, I'm telling you the spirit of God. If we don't stay in the spirit of God, if we don't stay in the spirit of God, as anointed as you are, as holy as you are, if that works of your flesh manifest, you are in big trouble. You could be all holy. You could be how soul out. That's why you need to know your place in Christ. You need to know who you are in Christ. You need to know that you are approved by Christ, not by men. As holy as David was, his senses began to control him and his action began to mad function. Such as you. If you don't know who you are and believe that you are untouchable and you feel you are all that holy, that's why he said there are no condemnation. You need to understand who you are because now when errors strike you. Now David could have said, Nathan, you matter what? I don't know who is that man. So now he would have begun to lie. And by he lying, it would have sink him. But he said no. He said, oh, that is me. He began to cry. He repent one time. Because he understand there are no condemnation now. So he understand I need to go to God now. So you that makes error, stop running from God. Come to God now. You need to know. You need to understand the spirit of God. Because if you run from God and you don't come to God now, that spirit that manifests through your senses will, 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 will control your what? Your character and your behavior. I repeat. If you have made an error and run from God, that five senses that controls you will sink you into the deepest part of the ocean. That's why you need to know that I am a proof of God. I am entitled to make mistakes. But I want, I'm not going to allow my mistakes to move me from God. I will run to God. I will reconcile to God. I will cry out to God because I refuse to live with my five senses. I need to stay in the spirit. Because why? 
That we seen here. To be carnally minded is death. So no, 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 no this. You need to know that I am approved by God. You need to know this. You must know this. Because now, if David did not know he was approved by God, he would have said, see me? I get enough of this. I fed up of this. When you are approved by God, you cannot get fed up, church. You cannot get weary. You gotta continue doing the things of God. You gotta be persistent. Running this race with perseverance. Amen? And then we hear what he says now. To be kindly minded is what? Immunity against God. Watch this. Follow with me. Follow with me. Seven. For it is not subject. Watch this. For it is not. So in other words, it is an issue. Amen? Watch this. For, for it is not subject to the law, which is a teaching of God. So the things of the flesh are not subject to the teaching of God. So the things of the flesh always have an issue, problem, quarrel against the things of God. The things of the flesh have not submit to the teaching of God. That was trying to tell you here. For it is not subject to the law of God. So the things of God have always have an issue when it comes to God in the council. The things of the flesh. So it cannot subject. So now you cannot put your flesh under subjection by your own willpower. Our flesh could only come under subjection by what? The approval of the spirit. By the, 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 the mind of the spirit of the, the, the Holy Spirit is the one that controls your character. Controls your behavior. Right now, this is what we have not known. That's why the Bible says, let God be true and let every man be a liar. Now, when a man says, I stop smoke, I stop lying, I stop lying, I stop going to the club. No, you have not stopped nothing. What the Holy Spirit have done, the Holy Spirit have what? Controlled you. That your works of your flesh will not be able to manifest. That you cannot do the things you used to do. You cannot go to the place you want to go. Because why? The Holy Spirit is the one who controlling you now. But now, if you put on a carnal mind and start to think lustful, now, there now, where your trouble now start. Amen? That way it's trying to sell you here. For it is not what? Subjected. So in other words, it have an issue to the law of, the, of God. Neither what? Indeed. To be sure. If it's true, it told. So now, you're not sure. So now, because you're carnal mind, you don't know what's sure. You don't know the plans of God. You don't know the will of God for your life. Because what? You're always doubting. Are you getting what I'm saying? Neither indeed can be. So then... They that are in the flesh cannot please God. No matter how you try, you cannot. Because now, when even if God sends something towards you, it's because your carnal mind, you, you, you don't know if you're sure. I'm not this sure, boy. I wonder, that's why it's very hard for someone who is in the world to believe the things of God. Because why? That's a carnal mind. A carnal mind never show concerning the things of God. A carnal mind will think, is this true or, or not true? No. That's what a carnal mind think. A carnal mind is a, is a mind that even if God himself is talking to you, you will say, no, 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 that's not God. Because why? When you are carnal mind, you cannot please God. Amen? Are you following with me tonight? Nine. But you are not in the flesh. No, take note of this. But you Christians, you believers, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. What is he trying to tell you now? If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of him. If any man have not been walking in the spirit, they are none of him. If any man don't have on or thinking carnally, so that's why now, to be in the spirit, you need to be partaker of the spirit of God. I repeat, to be in the spirit, you must be what? A partaker.
partaker of the Spirit of God. So now what we have not known and identified because you don't know the difference. You could be manifesting the works of the flesh and yet still, you, you don't know. So now that's important now for you to know. That we should tell you here. Yeah. But you are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. Now if any man have the spirit of, God, of Christ, he is none of his. If any man does have the spirit of Christ. So now, a man who is thinking from a carnal view, yeah, there is not the spirit of Christ in him. So now, that is not of Christ. So there now, the enemy now will use such people to destroy the Christ in you. I repeat. The reason why the enemy used such people to destroy the Christ in you, because why? They are not of Christ. So he that don't have the spirit of God in him, they are not of him. So now what we, 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 don't, ident we, we don't identify is because now, if, in other words, if they cannot deliver you, you will deliver them. And if you cannot deliver them, they will deliver you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you cannot bring them to Christ, they will bring you to the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if you cannot win their soul to God, they will win your soul to the club. If you cannot bring them to Christ, they will bring you to the gambling house. If you cannot bring them to Christ, they will bring you to the club. If you cannot bring them to Christ, they will bring you to fornication. If you cannot bring them to Christ, they will bring you to adultery. If you cannot bring them to Christ, they will bring you to lust. If you cannot bring them to Christ, they will bring you to gambling. Whatever, whatever, whatever. They will bring you to such addiction if you cannot bring them to Christ. So that's important now and to understand they that don't have the spirit of Christ, they are none of his. And sometimes we just try to try to bring people to Christ. Who is not of Christ. That's why you need the Spirit of God. And that's why many people today try to bring people to Christ. And when they look at yourself, they must in the same trap where the individual is who they was now trying to bring to Christ. If you are not strong, if you are not strong spiritually, if you cannot win their soul, their soul, they will win over your soul. That's why you need to stay in the Spirit of God. If you cannot win their soul, they will win your soul. If you cannot bring them to Christ, they will take you to the devil. Who don't have the Spirit of God in them, they don't have his. Not everyone have the Spirit of God in them. But the Bible says, save the Spirit of God which is in man. But there are some people, no matter how much you try to bring them to Christ, they will not come. No matter how hard you try. Because why? The Bible speaks it clear. No one can come unless the Spirit draws them. All you got to do is to know that you are approved by God. I am. Approved by God, you are approved by God. You are accepted by God. You are blessed by God. You are confirmed by God. You are officially agreed by God. There is no condemnation for you. You belong to Jesus. You don't belong to the things of the flesh. You belong to walk in the spirit. You belong to a place and it's flowing with milk and honey. You belong to a place where there's joy and peace. You belong to a place where there's mistake, there's reconciliation back to that place. There. Yeah. Reconciliation. This is the reason why Jesus died. It's to restore relationship and fellowship between God and mankind. You need to understand who you are. You need to understand that you are not of the flesh, but you are of the spirit. Don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty when the spirit of God have changed your life from a life you used to live of shame, regret, pain, and hurt. Don't be ashamed to abandon that post and go over to Jesus. Why? 
Because you are making effort to walk in the Spirit. You are making effort to walk in the Spirit. There are no condemnation for you. Why do you feel condemned? I said there are no condemnation for you. Why do you feel condemned? Man don't have the ability to condemn you. Man don't have the ability to disapprove you. Man will always be against you once you make up your mind to walk in the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is freely given to you without measure. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because Christ lives in you. And they give the Spirit of Christ without measure. So if you give the Spirit of Christ without measure and Christ is living in you and your life is hidden with Christ in God, you are without measure. You are not disapproved by God. What is your problem? Why are you staying so long to come back home? Why you are staying in a place of death? The law of sin is death. The law of the spirit is life. Why? Why? Why you stay there? Why you repeat, keep repeating the same thing over and over and over? Why you get caught up in a cycle of life? Why? There are no condemnation for you. Come back to God. Come back to Jesus Christ. All you need to do is to go on your knees, repent, and ask God for his strength. Use that same rage you have and get vexed with the wrong things you do. I repeat, use that same rage you have. You have rage. You have, you have many rage. Use that rage. And fight against that addiction you have. Use that rage and run away from that pit Satan has been trying to put you in. Use that rage. That rage that you have, you use it at the wrong time to the wrong people. That's your problem. If you could fight against Sin, fleshly desire with that rage, you'll be a better Christian. I'm talking about when people get you vexed, how you get on. I'm talking about that rage. That anger you have, use that anger to fight Satan. God is not going to vex with you. Use that strength to come out from that place of being stagnant. Stagnant. Yeah. Use it. You have what it takes. Why? Jesus said, I give you power over all flesh. He knows that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He's aware. He knows that the flesh is weak. Meaning, the flesh don't have what it takes to overpower the spirit. It is weak. Yeah. The spirit is willing. The spirit is ready. But your flesh is weak. Your spirit is always ready to fight against the flesh. But you, 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 you don't want to fight. 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 Until you make up your mind that you want to fight, God will help you. But if you don't want to fight, he's not going to help you. You cannot relax in a place of torment and be comfortable. When you decide to fight against him, Fight against your flesh. Fight against your addiction. Fight against your weakness. Christ will appear. Soon as you're ready to fight, Christ will appear. If you're not ready to fight, Christ will not appear. Don't sit there and say, God help me. God take me up. No, fight, 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 fight. Get up. Walk. Act, 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 act like you want to get up. Act like you want to move. Act like you want to change. Act, 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 act. Speak to it. Speak to that situation. When you react, when you react with a rage and attitude towards your situation, tell you, you move God. You pull God's attention. You draw God's attention. You make God have interest in you. 
When Moses saw the fire, the Bible said he drawn to it. Unless you drawn to Christ, nothing will happen. This is what we need to know. But if you have a carnal mind and you just keep on repeating yourself in wrongdoing, Satan will have a very, 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 very strong hold on your life. Very, very strong hold on your character. And God will come and meet you in that mindset. Because why? You choose to fight. What he says in his word. The kingdom of heaven suffered violent. You shall take it by force. You shall take the spirit of God by force. You shall take righteousness by force. You can take holiness by force. You have to take it by force. If not, Satan not going to let you go just like that. He's not going to let you go just like that. Use that rage. Use it. Use it. When you begin to use that rage, you will see for yourself. You will see for yourself. You will see your life will have meaning. Satan know that there are no condemnation who are in Christ Jesus, who walk according to the flesh. I mean, according to the spirit. So when he know you, you in, you in the flesh, you already condemned. That's foolish. That's why Satan's desire is to keep us in the flesh. Why? Because when you are in the flesh, you already condemn. You are disapproved by God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are what? Unfavorable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Opinion. Unfavorable opinion. There's no opinion. There's nothing you could do. That's what Satan knows. He knows such thing. He knows. That's why he keeps you in the flesh. Once you remain in the flesh, you already condemn. Because Satan knows there's no condemnation who are in Christ Jesus. So when you're out of Christ Jesus, don't say you're in Christ Jesus and you're in the flesh. It don't work like that. When you're in the flesh, you're in the hands of the devil. And when you're in the hands of the devil, you're in condemnation. Simple. Satan is not foolish. Be wise, church. Come up from that place. Come up from that addiction. Yes, mistake is meant to be made. And mistake can be corrected, corrected. But don't stay there. When you remain in the flesh, you are heeding slowly into condemnation. When you come out of the flesh, you are going into not being condemned. Think about it. There are two channels. Flesh, spirit. Flesh, spirit. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, I pray for your children. We thank you, God, for this word, God. You have approved us, God, by your spirit. Help us, God, to partake in the things of the spirit. Help us, God, to leave the works of the flesh. Lustful things, God. Sexual things, God. Fleshly thoughts, God. Carnal thoughts. Help us, God, to put on the mind of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, help us, God, to stay in the spirit, God. Help us, God, to be renewed by our mind. Help us to put on the mind of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, help us, God, to awake, God. Help us, God, not to leave, God, in conflict, malice, bitterness, hatred, illness, strife, malice. Father, I pray, God, that we shall know the truth. For the truth shall set us free. Help us God to stay in the spirit. Whereby we, be not, we will not be able to fulfill the loss of the flesh. Father I pray. Over the minds of your people. I pray God. That every five senses upon your people. Shall be controlled by your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray God. That you will touch them God. That they will not be misled. You see, to be carnally minded is death. Father God, help us to condemn flesh, God, and walk in the spirit, God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, heal your people, God, from sickness, from disease, from affliction. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, Father God, we thank you for doing it. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. I pray, God, that this word of encouragement will bless your heart. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. What you need is the law of the spirit. What is the teaching of the spirit? That will save your soul. 
It's not jumping and skipping and dancing and running all across the place. Ah, blah, 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 blah. It's not about all of that. These are not the law of the spirit. The law of the spirit is the teaching of the spirit. And the teaching of the spirit is the only thing to save your soul. I repeat, the teaching of the Holy Spirit is the only thing that is available to save your soul. If not, if not, all that jumping and dancing and skipping and fire and dance, uh, all of this, let a call for me. Because you kind of want to be like Moses without receiving the law of the Spirit. You kind of want to be like Esther, Naomi, Ruth, David, Samuel, Peter, Apostle Paul. You kind of want to be like these heroes of faith. Without receiving the love of the Spirit, it is impossible. It's tough, yeah. Deal with it's tough. It's for I to go and tell you how Elijah brings fire from heaven, you don't need to hear such things as yet. You need to know the difference between the flesh and the spirit. Being approved, disapproved. You need to know where you stand first. You need to know where your foundation laid. This is what we need to know. This is the basic thing of the Bible. The law of the spirit, which is a teaching. How can you be in packing nation with the gospel when you don't know the gospel? I repeat, how can you pack nations with the gospel when you don't know the gospel? How will you be able to stand the test of time when you don't know simple things like this? You need to know these things. That when mistakes happen, you will know to get back in that place, to get back in alignment, to get back in, to pick up yourself. You need to know how to shape back your spiritual life. You know, you need to know how to encourage yourself in the Lord. You need to know first who you are before you know others. If you hardly know yourself, how can you know others? You can hardly pray for yourself. How can you pray for others? Love your neighbors as you love yourself. You must first begin with you. This is what we need to know. You need to know how to be approved by God and how, what it takes to be disapproved by God. You need to know when I make an error, error is coming to you. You can like it or not. You will make error in life. You need to know what to do. How can I bounce back? How can I get back in alignment? When I run off on track, remember the road is narrow. If I all balance, how to get back on track? But today we don't want to give this, we don't want to take this teaching. We only want to have prophecy and fire, fire, fire. Can prophecy give you counsel? Can prophecy give you the law of the spirit? Prophecy is good. I'm not against prophecy. But how if you receive prophecy and don't know these things? Can prophecy help you? No. Prophecy is edifying for the, for the church. And this is the gospel. The law of the spirit. We need to know the law of the spirit. When you know the law of the spirit, sky's your limit. That's what, that's what keep me going. That's what keep me functioning. That's what make me effective. In this in Christ. That's what make me keep on going, 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 going. Because I, I, I try to understand how to be approved by God than being more approved by man. I try to, to understand these things. That now, even without the phone call, without the text, I know what to do. I know what to do. You need to know what to do. Yeah. You need to know who you are. You need to know that there's no condemnation for you. That's why many of us today, we are feeling guilty. You are guilty. Everything you are guilty for. When Christ already knows everything about you. He said, Jeremiah, I know you since you was in your mother's womb. But there's a question. Have you known yourself? Christ knows you. Have you known yourself? There are many people today, preaching to thousands of people, yesterday have not, they have not known themselves. Yeah, there are millions of people today 
have not even known themselves. You need to know more about yourself. Know the opinion of yourself, then you will know the opinion of others. Take time to know yourself. And for you to know yourself, you need to know the word of God. Because the word of God will tell you about yourself. Because why? You are a spirit. If you are a spirit, you need to know the things of the spirit. You need to know the mind of the spirit. You need to know the, the footstep of the spirit. You need to know the order and the protocol and the principle of being a spirit. You are not of the flesh. You are of the spirit. I pray God that you understand these words of wisdom. You are not of the flesh, but you are of the spirit. Being approved by the Holy Spirit. You need to know who you are in the eyes, in the tool, in the hands of the Holy Spirit. You need to know who you are. Don't let tear run out of you on you and you still don't know who you are. You need to know the opinion of yourself. I am a spirit. I am a spirit. I'm not human. That's what the Bible say. The Bible say any man in Christ is a new creature. He never said any man in Christ is a new flesh. He said any man in Christ is a new creature. He refers you as a creature. What is a creature? A creature is a beast. A spirit is a beast. A, a, a spirit is one that, 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 that contains powers. That's why it makes the devil so powerful. The flesh is nothing. That's what the Bible say. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Why? Because you are a spirit. That's what Jesus says. John 6, 63. The flesh profited nothing. But the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life, which means he is talking to me, 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 I'm a spirit. So the spirit speaks to spirit. That way before, when God makes you, what he make you? Flesh? He makes you spirit first. When God said in Genesis, let us make man, he make your spirit. And he make man in his image. Try to understand yourself in the spirit. Try to know yourself in the spirit. If not, you are being lost. You are being lost. And anyone will just walk across you. You will not even know yourself. You will never know when you're lost. There are many people lost today that don't even identify their loss. Amen? I pray God that you will know yourself in this season. And you are a spirit living in a physical body. I repeat. You, you. Yes, I'm speaking to you. Every one of you. You are a spirit living in a physical body. When I mean physical, I'm talking about a fleshly, sinful body. You. But you are a spirit. Amen? God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.